Ooh, scary title. <laughs> Ready? Okay, we're going to talk about DDoS botnets. You have the floor. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to share a few short stories of the Russian DDoS 1 uh, with you and ultimately try to map some booters to botnets. Uh, a little bit about me. My name is Dennis Schwartz and I'm a uh, security researcher with Arbor Network's ACERT team. Uh, my day-to-day -day mostly revolves around reverse engineering malware and adding detection of them to our products. Um, since DDoS detection and mitigation is Arbor's bread and butter, I spend a good deal of my time looking at uh, DDoS malware. Uh, I have two disclaimers and one political uh, correctness statement. The first disclaimer being that, as with most attempts at malware and threat actor attribution, I acknowledge that I'm making wild accusations using very incomplete information, uh, shaky pattern matching, and gut feelings. Um, I try to combat my confirmation bias as much as possible and make connections that make some sense, but as Adam Savage of the TV show Mythbusters likes to say, failure to properly attribute malware and threat actors is always an option. My second disclaimer is that I can't read, write, speak, or understand the, the Russian language. Uh, this is obviously a, a fairly large weakness, so I do the best that I can with Google Translate. And finally, when I, uh, I label a threat actor, a forum, uh, a piece of malware, et cetera, as Russian, I really mean it's most likely from that general area. Um, for the ease of organization, I'm rounding up to Russia. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, the Russian DDoS-1, or RD-1, is the name that I use to describe an informal grouping of um, threat actors that provide DDoSing services on the public Russian language underground hacking forums. Um, I've been looking into them on and off since about April this year. Here's a sampling of some of the forums. Uh, there are many, many more out there. And here's a sampling of some of the actors. Uh, again, many, many more out there. Uh, the RD1 dance starts when a threat actor decides to post an advertisement for their DDoSing service um, in the buy, sell services section of one of the many public forums. Uh, the ads usually include a, a fancy logo, uh, banner, or a, a, a motto, short explanation of what DDoS is, uh, types of DDoS attacks they support, pricing, uh, reputation information, and contact information. Uh, I don't have much visibility into the customer side of the RD1, uh, but some of the reasons I can think of off the top of my head as to why someone would buy DDoSing services from the RD1 would be uh, people getting upset at other, other players on the gaming networks, uh, robbery in the, in the underground, uh, lots of forums and DDoSing services themselves are DDoSing targets, uh, anti-competition, not just in the underground, but in some legitimate business environments, uh, ransom, uh, legitimate businesses and some of the more shadier businesses, uh, lots of gambling, porn, and um, escort sites are targeted and uh, possibly diversion while carrying out other attacks. In general, the whole gamut of DDoS attacks are available, uh, but to give you an idea, here are some a selection of attack types from a handful of ads. Uh, here's the pricing details from some more ads. Uh, for comparison's sake, I've included the DDoS entry from Trend Micro's uh, uh, Russian Underground Revisited Research Paper. It shows the pricing has more or less stayed stable throughout the years. Everything in the RD1 is reputation-based, uh, honor among DDoS threat actors, if you will. Uh, DDoS and services are verified by two methods. The first is by other forum members, of course. And the second is done via forum admins, who set up a test target that must be taken down by the DDoS and service. Uh, ads usually include vouchers of their service from other forums as well. If someone is wronged in a DDoSing transaction, uh, not the DDoS victim, of course, but if uh, services weren't rendered or weren't rendered as negotiated, uh, dispute resolution takes place in the forums. Uh, the forum admins play judge, jury, and executioner. Uh, if found guilty, the offender is usually uh, uh, banned from the forum and added to a blacklist section on the forum. Uh, in addition, their, uh, their contact information and handle are usually added to Pastebin and labeled as a scammer for Google search posterity. As uh, forum posts aren't the most real-time method of communications, the RD1 uh, threat actors will let their potential customer know that their service uh, is still up and active by posting so-called working 
updates uh, every few weeks or so to their sales threads. Uh, besides advertising, vouching, and the occasional dispute resolution, most of the business of the RD1 is done in private over ICQ, Jabber, and sometimes Skype. Uh, as you can imagine, this makes tracking the RD1 incredibly difficult, but for the rest of this talk, I'm going to try to do just that. Um, in general, uh, back-end infrastructure of DDoS booters, uh, they can be set up using a variety of methods. Uh, bulletproof hosted sites, some are sold specifically for DDoS booters. Uh, it could be a script with a, a list of a bunch of proxies, or it could be via a DDoS botnet. Uh, for the RD1, they mostly use the latter, and I found this out just by asking one of them. We'll see more of RUR do later on. Uh, the RD1 using DDoS botnets as their backend makes things convenient for us because um, as presented last year at, Bo at BlockConf uh, by my colleagues Mark and Jason, uh, Arbor Acer does a lot of uh, DDoS botnet tracking with our Blade Runner project. So using Blade Runner and other bits, I'll try to piece together uh, some stories of the RD1 that I found interesting. Uh, first story is about Stelios and his many booters. Uh, starting with one of his ads, um, I've highlighted the initial pivot points. These include his handle, uh, booter name, uh, his banner, ICQ, Jabber, and website. Uh, thinking his booter website, itmasters.cc, would be a good first pivot. I started digging through Blade Runner, uh, Acerts, Malware, Zoo, Virus Tools, Passive DNS, and, and some of the other open source um, sources out there. Uh, but this didn't turn up any DDoS malware or a botnet. Uh, all the edges ended up at Cloudflare, and that's kind of where I lose visibility. Uh, moving through, the other pivots started revealing more and more of his identities. Uh, the most important takeaways here are the Maver-based handles in blue and the two new booter websites in red. Uh, looking at the first booter site, ddosservice.cc, Again, no DDoS malware. The second one, though, ddosservice.ws. I got a Dirt Jumper DDoS bot, so this is a step in the right direction. Uh, but Blade Runner doesn't contain any attack data for this particular C2, so not much to explore. Uh, just a quick aside, um, I use a number of Multigo graphs in my talk, but I'm painfully aware of how terribly Multigo can show up in presentation slides. So I just wanted to annotate the general out outline I use, uh, C2 domains at the top, uh, the IPs, uh, the DDoS malware family are the red spiky things, and C2 path names at the bottom. Um, the uh, the uh, domains and IPs in the graphs are important, but they can be more or less glossed over during the actual talk, but please don't hesitate to reach out to me afterwards if you're interested in the details. Anyway, back to it. Uh, pivoting off a of DDoS service.ws got me another identity, Nginx. And with that, a couple more domains to trace. Uh, DDoS U Sluggy got me another dirt jumper, uh, but still no attack data. And DDoS service.nethouse, again, didn't result in any DDoS malware. Uh, before moving on, I just wanted to note a pattern of DDoS service that Stelios uses with some of his booter domains. Uh, it seems that he has since moved away from this pattern with his latest incarnation, which was itmasters.cc. Uh, Stelios is well known in the RD1 as being a scammer and a ripper, so he's upset a lot of folks. Uh, his identities keep getting blacklisted, and his purported real-life details have been leaked all over the forums in Pastebin. Uh, some of this leaked material has helped corroborate my pivots, but most of the new info was hearsay that I couldn't really link in or or, or verify. Uh, one post stuck out to me, though, as it associated specific IP addresses to Stelios. Uh, tracing these down, it turns out that the IP labeled as Stelios's botnet uh, does indeed link to a botnet, a, uh, a madness DDoS botnet. Uh, I'm labeling this the Operar botnet after the two domains it is associated with, and as I'll reference it a few times later. At the time of writing, uh, three of the four uh, C2s were active with different versions of the Madness panel running on them. Uh, the Opera botnet itself has been active all year, 
with uh, 509 uh, distinct attack targets. Here's a graph of its, of its attack activity. And to get an idea of what the botnet has been attacking recently, here are October's target domains. Uh, interestingly, one of the targets is itmasters.cc. So maybe this isn't Stellasis botnet after all, because why would he attack his own booter website? Um, I suppose it could have been him just running a test or something. But for now, I have to leave it open-ended whether Opera is really his botnet or somebody else's. Continuing on, I, I picked up the search from the other end and started with a known DDoS malware C2, uh, steliosmaver.ru. Seems like a, a reasonable association. Uh, here I picked up another, another dirt jumper, this time the drive variant and also an Athena DDoS bot. Uh, Blade Runner has logs for the Athena side of things. It was active for a few months in late 2013. Um, here are the target domains. The rest of the 41 were just IPs. And here is its attack activity. Pivoting off of Stelios Maver, that RU ends up leading to a large cluster of DDoS malware and botnets. Uh, after looking into it more, though, I'm on the fence as to how much, if at all, uh, it is associated with Stelios. Um, I'll return to more of the cluster later, but for now, uh, the section I've highlighted here contains four domains that all begin with legal D, and, uh, and they lead to a ferret and gbot DDoS bots. This is convenient because legal D, the RD1 threat actor, is the subject of my next story. Uh, legal D, DDoS Esquire. Legal D is an RD1 threat actor that had been running the legal DDoS uh, booter for a number of years. Uh, in addition to running a booter, he, um, he was also the seller and possibly the creator of the Paradise DDoS bot. Pivoting off of that, and again, looking through known DDoS malware C2's Paradise test that RU stood out to me as a, a likely candidate for the coder slash seller of Paradise. Uh, here is that at infrastructure. While the multigo graph is probably a bit difficult to read, the uh, two parts that I found most interesting were uh, there are four DDoS malware families, uh, Paradise, of course, uh, Armageddon, Eclipse, and Ferret. Uh, the last two is a personal connection since I've actually per researched those bots and blogged about them. Um, and the second interesting bit is this Teleon C2 domain. Uh, the Teleon C2 leads to Armageddon and Eclipse bots. Um, this is interesting because of a post in August of 2013 where Legal D was arguing a defamation case in front of a jury of his four member peers where he submits the following ICQ snippets. Uh, essentially, the top one boils down to someone named Teleon, what's calling Legal D a scammer for selling him a broken bot. Uh, Legal D responded with, hey man, I set you up a server, I set you up a domain and a bot. It's not my fault that you're trying to access the panel in the wrong directory. Uh, he continues though, uh, to make amends though, everything's our, our reputation based, I'll set you up with another bot, one that just went on the sale in the underground. And this aligns nicely with Armageddon and Eclipse because Eclipse had just started appearing in the wild right around August of 2013. Further down in the logs, uh, while he's troubleshooting with Teleon, uh, he actually just pastes the URL that contains Teleon, further solidifying the link that the paradise test.ru infrastructure is part of LegalD's. Before tying a few LegalD pieces together, I need to uh, introduce another RD1 actor, uh, Ross Goss Doss, or RGD, uh, really quick. Here's one of his ads from October, and some of his contact details. Uh, now, I wanted to mention Roscoe Stoss because of a few musings I had on Legal D and his infrastructure. Uh, this also ties back to that Stelios Maver.ru cluster. Um, I used a segue into the story. Uh, my first thought was that there seems to be a lot of association with RD1 threat actor names and Legal D C2 domains. Uh, second, there are a lot of DDoS families represented in his infrastructure. Uh, why would he need so many different for his one booter? You know, managing one family w is more likely than managing seven families. And, uh, and third, he's left a few clues here and there that he has ca the capabilities and the skill set to be a hosting provider. So these three things 
lead me to believe that LegalD provides DDoS malware hosting services to the RD1 along with his booter and Paradise bot. Uh, continuing on, here is more of that Stelios malware RU cluster. Um, I did run into a few issues with it though. First, besides the LegalD domain naming, I haven't been able to directly link this part of the infrastructure to LegalD's Paradise test that infra RU infrastructure. And at the time of writing, most of the domains weren't resolving or resolving to domain parking IPs. Blade Runner has a few historic logs from one of the ferret bots in that infrastructure. Uh, it was briefly active for a couple of months in early 2014 with only six target domains. And at the time of writing, only uh, three of the domains in that entire infrastructure were still active and they were all resolving to the same IP. Um, one domain points to a basic downloader botnet panel called KBot, and the other two domains, LegalD.ru and SenateFaze.ru, uh, they point to a GBot DDoS botnet. Uh, the GBot has been fairly active since July 2014 with 246 distinct targets. Uh, here's its activity, uh, attack activity. And uh, sampling of, his, of October's targets. Um, the LegalD.ru domain uh, being active was troubling to me because uh, I have another open-ended question as to whether how much of that Stelios Maver based infrastructure is LegalD's, if it is indeed his at all. Uh, you see in late 2013, LegalD uh, closed out most of his booter sales threads uh, and said that he was leaving the underground to work for a Missouri-based hosting slash DDoS mitigation uh, provider that specializes in legitimate high-yield investment programs or program sites, and he hasn't back, been back on the forums since. Next up is RD1 actor RURD. Uh, they advertise as a team, uh, so there might be multiple threat actors behind the scenes, but my feeling is as just one actor. Uh, they aren't particularly active in the RD1 forums, but some of their ICQ transcripts showed up in that previously mentioned uh, Stelios blacklisting, so there is some connection. Uh, they have a booter service, of course. And uh, this is its infrastructure. Uh, the DDoS malware of choice here is called Ayabot. Um, Ayabot is their own proprietary DDoS bot. I haven't seen it used outside of their booter infrastructure. Um, it's a fairly standard DDoS bot, so I'm not going to get into the details of it. Uh, there's a few slides on the web from another talk I did, and I know a few other researchers have their notes on there, or on the internet of, of Ayabot. Um, here are the Blade Runner stats for Ayabot with a small caveat. Uh, we have a small number of attacks between August 2013 and June 2014. Uh, initially, I had thought that the uh, botnet had died out in June but it turns out they had just started blocking our access. Um, I've since fixed that bug, and, uh, and the botnet remains active at the time of writing. I just don't have complete attack details. Uh, here's a sampling of the targets I do have. Uh, there are two familiar faces in the list, Stelios's DDoSService.cc and ITMasters.cc. While originally researching Ayabot and, and RURD, uh, I stumbled upon a chat functionality on their booter site and had the opportunity to have an impromptu interview with them. Uh, here are some of the snippets I found interesting. Uh, what does Aya mean, RURD? Uh, how long have they been active for? A couple years. Um, how do they distribute Ayabot? Uh, they gave a really vague answer here, but uh, they did say they don't use exploits. I'm taking that as exploit kits because they're too expensive. Um, and finally, how did they launder their DDoS revenue? And they do it through uh, gaming currencies. Um, I followed up about Bitcoin, but they said they don't use Bitcoin uh, because it wasn't popular in Russia. I don't know how true that is uh, nowadays, but. Also, while mapping their booter infrastructure, uh, I came, I stumbled upon what looks like a rebranded booter service called Overload Labs. Um, I haven't run, or I haven't seen any advertisements for this service in the RD1 or on Google or, or anywhere, so. I'm actually not sure if, it's, if it was launched or not.
Uh, moving on to Storm Team or S Team, um, they also advertise as a team, but it's likely just one threat threat actor named Huntsman. Here's one of their ads from January. Uh, they have a number of booter sites, including various uh, domains starting with DDoS service. Uh, if you remember, um, Stelios had a number of DDoS service domains as well, so there's some naming overlap here. Um, at this time, I don't believe there is any overlap of the two actors, but considering Stelios' history of multiple identities, I'm not ruling it out. Um, along with Jabber and ICQ, they have a fairly active uh, Twitter account as well. Mapping booter domains, uh, they don't lead to any DDoS malware. Uh, furthermore, reading in the posts associated with um, S-Team, uh, it's easy to see that the RD1 is not a fan of them, and they've been blacklisted and doxxed accordingly for being a scammer. The most interesting piece of evidence to me in this blacklisting was an ICQ transcript between Storm Team and an RD1 threat actor known as Crabegg. Uh, the ICQ conversation happened on uh, June 12, 2014, and in what looks like an, accidental pay an, an, an accident, uh, Storm Team pastes three DDoS target orders to Crabegg. Uh, Crabegg even annotates in his post that Storm Team stupidly pasted him his DDoS orders. Uh, this accidental paste was very helpful because from June 12th to June 21st, uh, Blade Runner logged attacks on one of those targets from 15 distinct C2 domains. Here's a Multigo of that infrastructure. Uh, the highlights here are that all the C2s lead to Dirt Jumper drives. Uh, in addition, there's some really good IP sharing among the 16 IPs and some good patterns in the C2. Uh, URL file names, as we can see here. Taking it all as one logical botnet, it's been very, very active all year with, uh, with a little more than 1,500 uh, distinct targets. Uh, this is the attack activity, the most active C2 in the bunch. And it had uh, 142 distinct targets in October alone. Here are some of the domains. Uh, my next story is about Chef and his trolling. Uh, here's his ad from 2013, but it has recent working posts. And his contact information. Um, Chef's advertised at least five booter websites over the years, and they all seem a bit familiar and coincidental. Um, I don't believe there's any overlap of Chef and these two other threat actors I've mentioned previously. I just think he's trolling the RD1 and trolling security researchers. Tracing down the booter sites lead me to a dead end, though. Um, digging through Chef's posts, I thought I had stumbled upon a good lead with an August 2013 vouch for the Ferret DDoS bot. Um, but I haven't been able to weed out a possible candidate from the ferret C2s known to me. Uh, so at this time, Chef's DDoS bot is still an open question. Uh, my second to last story is about an RD1 threat actor known as Copyleft. Here's an ad from 2013 with uh, current working posts. Uh, there's actually a lot of positive feedback from satisfied customers in this particular thread. Uh, here is his contact details. Uh, my first botnet pivot for him was on some ICQ logs that were leaked where he was trying to purchase an Optima DDoS botnet back in 2012. Uh, despite having a C2 URL for it in the logs, I couldn't track this one down in the wild at all. Next, pivoting off his email address got me a handful of domains. And as you can see here, it kind of took off from there. Um, there are a number of DDoS malware families uh, involved here, so I'm going to break them down into sections. Starting with the single instances of Paradise, Neutrino, and Athena botnets, or yeah, Athena botnets. Uh, they are all linked in by some solid IP sharing with more with some of his more uh, prolific botnets, which I'll talk about next. 
Uh, his paradise was active around May and June of 2013, but has since gone away. Uh, his Athena was briefly active around October 2013, and his Neutrino was first seen around July of this year. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any Blade Runner uh, logs for, for any of these. Uh, next, the Black Rev DDoS botnet, another personal connection for me. Uh, this link makes a lot of sense because when uh, Black Rev was being advertised in the forums uh, back in 2013, Copyleft was listed as an authorized seller. Um, unfortunately, all the old Black Rev advertisements have, have been taken down and removed from Google or expired from Google, so I don't have a visual of that. Now, for posterity, here are the historical Blade Runner stats from Copyleft's Black Rev botnet. Uh, it was active for a few months in mid-2013 with uh, 43 distinct targets. Mm, here's some of the uh, attack targets from then. Uh, next is a good-sized ferret botnet. The connection to ferret also makes a lot of sense because on the only public uh, ferret sales thread that I'm aware of, uh, he, uh, he gives praises of the bot. Uh, paraphrasing a bit, he goes on to say that several times he's needed changes to the bot itself, and he's got an almost one-day turnaround service from, from, the code, from Ferret's coder. Uh, we can kind of see that version progression in some of the C2 path names I've associated with Copyleft. Uh, in addition, there's some, some good C2 file name patterns as well. Uh, Blade Runner hasn't logged many attacks from the Ferret side of things, though. Uh, only 14 distinct target domains for a few days in August of 2014. Here, here are those targets. On to the Madness botnet. Uh, this segment was active from October 2013 to March 2014 with 40 distinct attack targets. Here's the activity from the most recent or most active C2. And here's a uh, target sampling. Uh, last but not least uh, is the very large Dernjumper Drive botnet. Um, it's been active since at least June 2013, and Blade Runner has logged close to 1,700 distinct uh, target domains. Here's the attack activity from the most active C2 in that bunch. And uh, there was uh, 50 distinct targets in October, and here's a sampling of those targets. Uh, a couple of quick pattern notes. Um, just because, or just about all a copyleft Sturge Ember Drive uh, C2 path names contain uh, slash DRV. And um, some of his earlier domains contain CLF, which seems like a likely abbreviation of his handle. My last RD1 story is about Krabby Crabegg. Uh, there's been a few references to this actor in my talk so far. Uh, the first one was when I was talking about Celios' blacklisting. Crabegg was the person who, who leaked his supposed IP addresses that led to that Uproar Madness botnet. Uh, and the second reference was during the story about Storm Team, where uh, Storm Team accidentally pasted him uh, some of his, their DDoS targets during their blacklisting. Uh, looking into Krabig some more, he really enjoys the blacklisting process. Uh, when he gets involved, his evidence tends to be fairly thorough. Uh, it's been f uh, thorough enough to link a few bar booters to botnets, uh, including his. Uh, here's one of uh, Krabig's ads. Most of his ads are old. This one's from 2012, uh, but the sales threads have current working posts. Uh, his contact details have been stable throughout the years as well. Uh, pivoting off of uh, Krabig's Stelios blacklisting post on September 24th, 2013, uh, I searched Blade Runner for any attacks on the two IPs he leaked. Uh, and sure enough, on September 24th, Blade Runner logged attacks against uh, both those IPs from one C2. And that C2 was kirab.bgit.ru. Uh, in addition to the attack targets, its C2 domain name is eerily similar to Krabig. 
Um, I wasn't able to associate many DDoSing assets to this botnet besides the uh, the one dirt jumper here. Uh, but it was fairly active from May 2013 to October 2013 with 119 distinct target domains. And here's that act attack activity. And for posterity, here are some of those some of those targets. Uh, digging through more of Crabegg's blacklisting posts, I uh, came across one for someone named San Wells. Uh, again, Crabegg posts thorough ICQ logs as evidence. This time there's a reference to attack on August 10th, 2014, on a domain that starts with San Wells. Uh, the rest of it was, was censored in the paste. Uh, pivoting off of that in Blade Runner got me an attack on sanwells.ws on August 10th, 2014 from 3C2s. Uh, here they are. Uh, those first two C2s, legald.ru and senateface.ru, uh, look a bit familiar, though. And they are. They were two of the three active domains uh, I mentioned in Legal D's story. Uh, these were the ones that confused me as to why they were still active after Legal D had supposedly left the the uh, RD1 and then and when the rest of his infrastructure had died out. Uh, it seems at least that part was not Legal D's and more likely Crab Eggs. Uh, I've shown the pivots uh, and attacks for Legal D and Senefes already. So these are the pivots for that third C2, uh, compromat kavkezru uh, Here we get a couple more dirt jumpers and also a Pandora DDoS bot. Uh, taking that all as one logical botnet, uh, here are the Blade Runner stats, fairly active with uh, 767 distinct targets over the, over the last year. Uh, here's that att attack, er, attack activity. And 48 distinct targets in, uh, in October. And with that, that's volume one of the Russian DDoS one, where I try to map some booters to botnets. Um, as you probably have noticed, my approach is very passive, relying on a lot of luck, uh, shaky pattern matching, and gut feelings to combat my, the incomplete information. But as I mentioned in the beginning, I try to make connections that at least make some sense to me. Um, at times, it's been extremely difficult and frustrating to make some of those connections. Uh, going forward, I do have a few ideas about using more active enumeration techniques, uh, things like DDoS honeypots and known target domains to help trace back to an RD1 threat actor. And, uh, but that, of course, comes with its own set of risks and challenges. Um, so we'll see how and if that pans out. Uh, hopefully you saw some of the same connections that I did and enjoyed the stories. Thanks so much for listening. I think I got some time left, so probably some questions. One or two questions. Do, 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 do. One, two, <laughs> three.